Today I'm in Oxnard where the Salvation Army has been serving the community since 1899. Under the leadership of Lieutenant Angelica Acosta, key services include homeless outreach and supportive service for veterans' families, basic social service assistance and utility help. There is a food pantry every Tuesday and Friday serving up to 200 families a week. Oxnard also hosts a food pantry for seniors every month. The Corps is working to form a small outreach youth team and they have recently started a Bible study every Tuesday night at a women's sober house. For many years, the Oxnard Corps has provided a free dental clinic, but COVID forced its permanent closure in July. Please pray for Lieutenant Angelica and the Corps as they work to expand its social services to include healthcare navigation to fill some of the gap the clinic has left. Also, please pray for a women's ministry leader and an influx of young people into the Corps. Lastly, please pray that this call can be a bright light of hope for this community. Luke chapter 7 tells us of a story of when Jesus went to eat at a Pharisee's house. It tells us about this woman who found out about this dinner and she needed to go meet Jesus. So she takes this alabaster jar. As she when she gets there, she stands behind Jesus and she starts weeping. She's crying so much that she wets his feet with her tears. She wipes them with her hair, kisses them, and breaks the alabaster jar. As Simon is looking on, seeing what's happening, he's thinking to himself, if Jesus knew who this woman was, because she was a sinner, he wouldn't be letting her do what she is doing. Simon is arrogant with pride, judging her. I identify myself with this woman, but too often I identify more with Simon. How easily I can forget how poor I was without Jesus, how what it took for Jesus to be obedient to his father and the sacrifice that he made for me. I mean, it's, it's the same in our own lives. Our parents sacrifice so much for us, but it's only until we become parents ourselves that we realize what a great sacrifice they made. I mean, maybe that is why we have a hard time showing our gratitude toward our savior or why we easily lose sight of the sacrifice. I mean, what can we compare it to? Nothing compares. There is no illustration that could even come close. What he forfeited on our behalf is so unfathomable that it leaves us lacking. My challenge to you this Lent season is not not to give up something, but to always remember what has always been there, the presence of God in your life. How can we show our gratitude? How can we show gratitude for the sacrifice that the Lord made? Second Corinthians tells us eight in eight, nine, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. We could show our gratitude by remembering and keeping his commandments, by coming humbly to worship him, and by declaring him Lord over our lives. Amen. You step down into darkness 